call this uh, October 5th Jackson County Commission Work Session to order. We have our roll call. Mr. Warren, Mr. Gessner. Present. Mr. Ranger. Present. Three, Mr. Miller. Present. Mr. Four, Mr. Leslie. Present. Present. All the reports. And quorum is present. Uh, we'll have our invocation by Mr. Porter and our pledge. God, our Father, we are blessed to be here today. Thank you so much for this beautiful weather that we have, the wonderful sunshine. Be with those along the East Coast that are suffering so much because of the rain. God, we pray that you'll be with them and comfort them and help them put their lives back together when they have been uh, displaced and caused difficulty. So, God, we pray for them, especially right now. We also pray for everybody that's in this room. Pray for the families. Watch over us and guide us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next item is approval of the agenda. We have nine items on the agenda. I think we had two items. The last two items were added uh, for just a quick discussion or presentation. Um, any changes before we proceed? Have motion to approve the agenda as presented. Motion. Motion. Motion and second. Second. Any, for any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. Can sign up no one sign up to speak, so we'll move on to discussion items. Uh, okay, several of these items, things we've kind of talked about in the past, so and now, I guess, looking to see where we're going to go with them. And the first item is regarding the retire insurance. We discussed uh, different options on how we wanted to move forward with this. It was presented during the budget time about uh, the possibility of not picking up any increases um, for uh, some point forward, and I thought maybe the discussion had been maybe start that next year. Uh, another part of that process was to say that after a certain date, this benefit will no longer be uh, uh, benefit for employees so whether that be you know if you're hired from this point forward or hired after a certain date that this benefit wouldn't be available to you so i wanted to open that up for discussion see where we wanted to uh, move forward how we wanted to move forward with that i agree that we need to do something but uh and i would uh, uh i would like to look further into uh, uh employees hired on a certain, certain date if we were to pass a resolution uh, either reducing it or cutting it out one or the other but only for new hired employees. Okay. As far as new, new hire starting from this point forward? Right. Okay. Right. Or set it in a specific amount for new hires from today <laughs> forward um, but as far as current people or retirees I, I couldn't support taking a benefit from them. Are we going to continue to absorb the increases for all, for everybody that's hired from now, all the way to the people that are currently retired, just continue to absorb them? Uh, I think we, we need to start policy right now. It should have started 30 years ago. Anybody hired now, we, we don't need to pay for insurance. Uh, if somebody retires at 45 years old. Right, that's what I was saying either. Either reduce or cap it, it, you know, cap it, or, you know. cap it or or uh, uh, reduce it. You know, obviously, employees now are retiring at uh, before they reach the age of 50, and uh, the county pays their insurance for uh, till they're 65. So, uh, you know, if we could institute a policy on new hires, whatever the date may be, then I think change we need to start there, but. I, I, my personal opinion is, is if you're a new hire, you don't want you to retire, you, you just forfeit your benefits. I mean, I just can't say the county ain't going to be able to afford to keep paying. You're going to have to do one of two things. Either increase your wage scale tremendously or continue giving them a benefit or the, attract, the, the amount of people you attract and the quality of people is fixing to, to drop. We're going to have to do one or the other. But we can't, now, we can't afford later. to continue the the benefit either. I mean, it's an unlimited benefit if we leave it as it is. Well, the people that have retired and the people that are in the system now came to work with that, um, with that knowing that that was a benefit they had 
and, and I'm not for touching it. I, I, I agree with you. I mean, I don't think we should cut it out. I just wonder if we should look at least letting them absorb a portion of it. Maybe it's 10%, 20%, 30%, something. I mean, Mr. Porter, was you able to see yeah, 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 about what we had discussed about in the existing potential people. of I'm saying I don't think so. I'll say you don't touch it. Because it's a cash payment. If it's something else, maybe, but not cash payment. That's not their problem. We didn't do a better job either. Well, we didn't do a better job of negotiating a plan. That's what I think. Are we all, are we, are we looking kind of in the same picture of as far as going forward? Any new hires? We can always take the benefit away with a new hire and then give it back at some time. If you give them a portion of the benefit and say when you retire, you can't, we're having trouble taking that back. I would suggest if we're going to cut back on the new hires, we save nothing for this for the time being. And then if we get in a better situation, we can always add that benefit in. I think you're going to kill yourself for the quality of applicants you get. Because our um, pay scales are not competitive as they are. I say you cap it. We're not you know, competitive uh, with other municipalities or not competitive with well, marketplaces. Just let's let's just take retirees real quick. Retirees are paying eight hundred dollars a month. Alright, listen, let, let's think about this for a minute. And what is an employee for? Four hundred yeah. something three wrong with this picture. Three, three eighty nine. I don't think we're something. doing ourselves any justice by why would a retiree insurance when they're 48 years old, be double. It's we, ridiculous. We had some to retire in the very next month. I mean, it sure, it goes to retire your mouth. I call it, ridiculous. Uh, what I was telling you about Blue Cross was that once a person retire it, is retired, no matter what age they are, they go into the pool with all the retirees. So they're they're just pooled together. But that same person can work till they're 62 years old for the county and pay $400. Mm -hmm. I'm not yes. rocket scientist, but you know, this don't. It something's not right. Yeah. It doesn't, but we are on the state. Yeah, and that's uh, the way it works. I even called a couple other counties. Do we have to stay on the state system? We don't have to stay on them, but if we were to come off of it, we could not use Blue Cross Blue Shield for two years, I believe. And we've looked at the alternative of going with another insurance company, and at this time, those costs would be more. Blue Cross has just kind of got the corner in Alabama. We can't even break out the retirees and put them on a different. Uh, My understanding is that we can't. You know, I have to stay under the same. You know, your new hires, again, it's my opinion, when you go to wherever it's put on here, I'd say cap it at an amount for the retiree insurance, but you got all the benefits. Uh, I believe in order to keep cap it at that age for 60 or, you know cap it at an amount you know if we're paying four hundred and ten dollars a month for then from this date forward in the new hires that's how much we'll pay yeah, you know no. plus the increases and you know it won't be 800 right but at least they'll know 10 years from they've now got, maybe. <laughs> maybe but at least they'll know they got 25 years to figure it out the ones that's in the system now that came to work for that benefit. I, I can't support touching it. Do we, is, is, there, is there any thought on, on, on uh, absorbing or not absorbing increases? I would support not in, in, not continuing to absorb the increases. I mean, uh, I, I don't want to cause a hardship to retirees. But, you know, this promise when it was made 30 or 40 years ago, I mean, uh, it was a completely different in environment when it comes to insurance. And, uh, you know, we were having to cut our budget, cut our hours and everything else. And this is a huge drain on the general fund. And I don't want to take anything away from anybody. I, I agree with you. But to continue with the way the insurance uh, industry is now and the increases are, are you know but is it to me you know that's i understand where you're coming from i'm right opposite i say you don't touch them you know it's not really their fault that it's increasing it's not our fault that it's increasing these folks are on well, fixed incomes it's not the taxpayer's fault that it's increasing you either. don't have to check for them yeah. if it decreases if you're not and i don't see they pay the increase 
want to state a decrease. <laughs> I don't think. Maybe we should be negotiating something better than that. You know, if you're not going to sit and write them a check, if it decreases, if you look you at some of the, have them write a check for an increase. If you look at the, some of the organizations, two of the organizations that I know of that have insurance outside the local government system have higher costs um, than we do uh, for individuals. I'm not sure about how the retiree board can work, but for individuals, they have higher costs than we do. So, you know, in that sense, I don't know that pulling out with, plus you've got the negative uh, effects of losing that coverage, not really have an option for two years. Um, so it's hard to negotiate when we're within that plan. We can't negotiate those, those rates separately from the plan. If it, Seeing, I think through the budget process, we said we were going to take this year you know, for the increases. I, I really do think we need to continue to have the conversation on it as far as that part goes for current uh, retirees. And as we continue to monitor the budget, we, I think we need to keep that as a possibility. So if uh, I'd like, what I'd like to do on that aspect, we can look at some numbers, look at some different options. And uh, because this will not be affected until the next budget year as far as this part of it goes, Maybe we can bring this back up in May as we're approaching the next budget year and kind of look at what the situation is there and uh, have some different options of what some savings would be, whether it be to take the increases or say we're only going to pay an amount and, and look at that. We may we may not do anything, but at least I think we need to continue to look at this as an option. I'd like for it to go away, um, put it to bed, and you know just write it down as a cost to do a business and we. I just can't support having them pay for something they were promised. I'm not going to do it. But that's my opinion. We can talk about it in May, but I'm not going to change my mind. Um, I just, I think it's, I think it's bad business. These folks work these years for that benefit, and I, I just can't see it. In regards to new hires, how do we want to proceed? Would be for not maybe we could look at, uh, you know, like Mr. Venable suggested, pay their same amount that we're paying for their insurance currently when they retire. We looked at, oh, how to maintain that portion. Right. Uh, Or, or at a reduced rate. Yeah, I was just saying, I just wrote, what about doing like new hires pay them, if they retire, they pay $200 a month. So no matter what the amount is, that's what the county, and they set a set we amount. Can't, we can't do I don't that. Think you do that. Uh, well, can't I, pay them cash. No, I don't mean pay them cash. I'm just, saying, towards their insurance. I'm just saying that we $200 would be the cap that we pay on the time the insurance oh. per month. If you set it at a dollar amount, though, and with inflation and everything else, 10, 20 you know, years from now, that, that, we can dollar, that dollar amount, though. we need to tie it to a percentage of uh, what we pay on them. Well, we could put the dollar amount because that could change. That would, that would allow, that would allow us to do that. 90 percent of the amount per employee, that way if it's 600 instead of four, you still pay 80 or 90 But then we may over-obligate ourselves without knowing it, which is what the situation we're in right now. We both over-obligated ourselves and, and not had. Well, even if we even if we chose a 50%, that would be, uh, you know, something. I would still say we need to put a number in there and not a percentage. Again, you can always increase the benefit, but apparently it's much more difficult to take it away. I think the quality of applicants is going to decrease tremendously when you, when you do this. But if we run out of money, pay me now, pay me later. Like I said, you either raise the wages, uh, wages whether they want it for that or they have the benefits. Well, we haven't been able to give raises in three years, and part of it's because of our obligation that been made for us 30 or 40 years ago with having me. And it's hard to get the wages up when you when you're mired down in obligations from the past. If we're all agreed to uh, moving forward that uh, some portion or if that's where we want to look at we can have a resolution put together, leave it uh, open as to whether we want to do a percentage or an amount. Could we do that, Mr. Porter? Sure. 
uh, would everyone be okay? And then we can discuss that further after we get that uh, resolution before. I us. would say we'll have it on the next discussion before right. we put okay. in, before we put any time into it. Okay. Uh, well, there's time into it. Some, we're going to have to do something. Yeah. We can't just let it continue to sit on the table. We've got to make a decision at some point. And we need to make. And we're talking about just for new hires from this date forward. From what yes, I understand right yeah. now. Well, we need to be headed that way so that by the end of the month. I would say we could, we could go ahead with it, and once the next time we discuss it, if there's any changes to be made, we can make the changes then. Have have a, if we could have a resolution at the next work session, making changes and the procedure. No, we just need to. This is something we we pushed off some time because we've not, but we do need to do something at least for new hires, if nothing else. Okay. Uh, you prepare that for the next work session. All right, next items regarding the polling places. Um, the uh, Looking at the, the previous election, this was another thing we talked about in our budget meetings about the possibility of closing some polling places to save some dollars. Um, I've been looking, we've looked at a few of the polling numbers. You know, number of folks voting in certain precincts and things like that. We're trying to gather some information. I wanted to bring this up to give everybody a heads up, see if there's any thoughts on how we want to proceed, if we want to proceed with this. Uh, but if we do, what I'd like to do is get some, some more detailed numbers on, on um, uh, the number of uh, registered voters in different precincts so that we can analyze that and see if there's maybe a need to close some polling places. I know in some cases we have areas where maybe 20 or 30 people vote and they can go three or four miles down the road and you know, vote in a different precinct, uh, you know, even if we were to close that one. So it's costing us, I think it costs us $3,600. Uh, I'll have to look at the numbers again, $3,600 in the election per precinct. That sounds right. Um, so either way, I'll, I can have all those numbers and figures together. I just wanted to see if this was something we wanted to continue to pursue as far as the means to save some dollars. I think it is because there's a number of polling places that aren't that far apart and uh, like I said, very limited voters. I think in the special voice we had, we had some that had nine votes. Yeah, I mean there were some really small ones. We would look though, I think we need to look at, you know, like the presidential voters, elections yeah. And, yeah. and look at the registered voters and yeah, look at the big, the whole picture. But yeah, you're right, this one, this last one we didn't have to any at all. So. So is that something we want to pursue? If so, I can, I can try to have some information together for the next uh, work session where we have some more detailed numbers on polling places. Okay. Uh, and in, also in that, uh, we'll be talking about the Bryant Senior Center. Uh, that's one I'd like to ask that we change that polling place. So if there are any other polling places that we know need to be changed, we can do that in this process also. So if it's in one location, we we'll want to move it to another location. Um, if you have any in your precincts that would... Uh, qualify for that and keep that in mind. Okay, next item regarding the dental. Um, okay, you have in your packet some information on uh, uh, this is change, would be changing our dental insurance right now. We have the insurance through Blue Cross Blue Shield. What you have before you is uh, two different plans, a plan one and a plan two. Um, similar to the way we did the vision insurance. We did vision insurance with uh, these folks last year. So similar to the way they did that, we've got a plan one and plan two. This would save the county $8,400 a year to move to uh, this uh, dental with $16.50 a month you see here. I think currently we're paying 20. Um, the difference in this is right now, uh, if you have individual coverage, you've got individual coverage on your dental. If you have family coverage, you have family coverage on your dental. This would give folks an additional opportunity to have uh, family coverage. If they don't have family coverage insurance, health insurance, they can have family coverage dental through this plan. There is another plan I'll go over in a second that allows that, but I want to go over this first. The, um, it will cost a family that's on it now, it'll cost an extra dollar fifty per month. For families that are not on it now, however, this is going to be, um, I think, about eight nine dollars and fifty cents less expensive than their other option. So it saves the county money and it saves anybody that would, you know, is interested in getting on a dental plan and allows them to have that benefit uh, even if they don't have family coverage insurance. Benefits are the same uh, compared to what we have now. Uh, the plan two, that would be an upgrade if someone wanted to do that again similar to the vision, they would be, they would have to pay that uh, additional amount. Um, 
the difference between plan one and plan two. If they did that, and it gives you a slightly better benefit. So, questions, comments, thoughts on this? What plan do we have currently? Uh, we have plan through Blue Cross Blue Shield. And who's this for? This is through Guardian. It looks a lot like plans for additional. This would be instead of we would drop the Blue Cross. We'd have this now. If you look at your second, there's another sheet in here. It looks like this. This is an option employees have as it is now. This is a supplement that anyone can add to their current dental, which basically adds coverage. Whether we stay with Blue Cross or whether we add, go to this, this is still an option for employees. So we're not taking any options away from them as far as that goes. We're giving them a similar benefit, reduced cost for us, give them an opportunity to, to do the family, and they still have this opportunity, which is also single or family coverage. They would have to pay you know, for this as well. Um, the difference is, again, if they can do this now, between this, the uh, Guardian plan is actually less expensive even than this plan. So this is really just additional supplemental if you want to have uh, extra benefits. I think it's, a, it's the Guardian good because there's a lot of, we got a lot of people who don't, can't afford family health insurance, but they would take the, I've talked to them and they would take the family dental. So I'd be for getting this for the folks. Do you have any idea how often this is used by our employees? The dental? Yeah. No, we. I now, this is not much. You got an annual maximum of a thousand dollars, and no, that's orth that's orthodontics. Oh, the annual maximum for the uh, preventive. preventive. That's yeah. your take on it. I think that's your. Yeah. And then pay fifty percent for any kind of upgrades and everything else. Mm -hmm. Again, this is the same Most way we have. Most use. A lot of it because of it, you know, 50%. Of it. Well, I mean, you can upgrade right here. It right. just pays 80. Well, I mean, what does your plan pay? 100%? I don't have any plan. But the, it's the same plan we have in place not, through Blue Cross. It's just less expensive. Yeah, that's what I got. I mean, I, I like mine. It's the same. And as if, if someone does want 100% coverage on things like that, again, they can use the supplement or they can they can do the 80% or they can go through this extra supplement. Percent coverage. It saves dollars and gives employees a, another option to choose from. I was just curious how often if this was even used much. I'm not sure if we could pull the numbers exactly. Well, it's the same thing, just a little less cost, is what you're saying. Right. But if you choose it now. You can't go back to Blue Cross Blue Shield for two years. With the dental, we can. We can go back any time. Dental, we can. <clears throat> it's only the health. I have that limitation for whatever reason. So, any, any thoughts on this? If we if we were to move forward with this, I'd like to move forward if everyone's ready next week so that we can get the enrollment going and get everything changed over. January 1 is when it would take effect. Um, this is this is also, you know, we looked at health insurance, but the health insurance cost was too much. And again, we can't, you know, we limit our options there as well. So um, they were able to put this plan together and it looked pretty good for us. Any other questions or thoughts? I you should go with it. Any objection to placing this on the agenda for next week? If you have any other questions between now and then, let myself or Michelle uh, and uh, personnel know and we can get you an answer for it. Okay. Next item is regarding the TVA uh, pickup sites. Uh, we discussed this last year about TVA uh, uh, paying for um, giving an amount to the county, an annual amount to the county to help maintain certain sites in the county. This is a copy of that agreement. Uh, have you had an opportunity to review that, Mr. Porter? This agreement? I did. Okay. Any thoughts or? Uh, the only thought I had was that we don't have a uh, pickup litter crew anymore. Right. We would do it through, if we do this, we do it through our uh, county park for the time being. Right. Uh, several of these sites are boat ramps that we, we maintain to some extent. Um, of course, if we ever run into an issue where they're saying they are, are demanding more than we feel we can produce, I think it has 30 days, we can right. uh, cancel the agreement within 30 days, and no other stipulations other than if they've already paid us, you know, we have to, we may have to prorate the share back. 
Uh, there is a map in here that shows the locations that they're discussing. One, two, I think six locations that they're looking at that they want to want us to maintain or keep cleaned up. Any thoughts, questions, comments on this? We might be able to do that. Did we not discuss at one time about bidding all this out? these six sites and what we already take care of and um, the I was mean, I think we did discuss that at one time. We went uh, that would be somewhat separate to this. This obligates the county to maintain it to an extent so we can still technically get it out and these dollars can supplement the process. Uh, I'm just concerned that you know the part we got less employees than we had down there the right. and we hired less part-time employees and the boat launches are not that big a deal but when you get into you know, a mile and a half and another two miles or whatever of roadside I mean that can get pretty time consuming. And I think the, the portion on those that you see I think that's more of a um, <laughs> certain full off or whatever they're not they're talking about as opposed to the length that we can clarify with them but yeah, it does look like they're saying clean up the roadway for that length, but I think it's more certain pull bumps, and we do have a boat slip in both of those areas. Don't this agreement mean it says it is understood knowledge that there's no way a third party beneficiary agreement is to solely between the TBA, the United States of America, and the county? So what that means that, right? that you can't do it out for it. That's that, just one of the first yeah, things that I see. That, that, that paragraph doesn't mean you can't get it out. That has third party beneficiaries yeah, different but we're responsible on the prior for. page it says that the county cannot assign the contract or any benefits or obligations without the permission of TVA. So, so we couldn't hire somebody. Well you did. could. You'd have yeah, to get their permission. Have to get their permission. permission. Okay. How many more would we have to add? We've got boat slip sites throughout the county uh, the Mud Creek. We had we had five, but some of them were at some of these same sites. Right. So it would be a, probably a total of eight, or nine, yeah. something like that. Seven or eight. As like it is, if we if we feel it's not to our benefit, we can cancel it. Yes, sir. Well, I'm not the you know the heaviest traffic the boat launches are going to see is in the summertime when you know we need to be mowing grass and we've got three different places, you know, two different places besides the park that we have to travel to mow grass. And I'm just concerned when getting there, there are people too spread out. Let's get a consent from on the. Because if you don't take this 5,000, we're going to be cleaning up anyway. Right. We're maintaining most of these areas as it is. Yeah. Let's do that. What, what we can do, if there's no objection, we can place this on the agenda for next week, and then we'll begin to look at what the bid process, and also I'll uh, contact TBA. Um, do we need to accept that agreement first and then discuss bidding, or do we concentrate? Do either way. We'll, we'll ask them about the possibility, saying we do have other additional sites we want to cover and see how that works. So I'll have that next Monday. If it's not satisfactory, we can table it until we get a satisfactory result. Is that appropriate? Sure, because if you bid it out, I'm sure the TBA would, they would give consent, but they would also look to the county to make sure it got done. Right. I mean, if it didn't okay. get it, they're not going to go to the third party contractor, they're going to come to the county and say it's not clean. Okay. All right, next item is the Sheriff's Office Uniform Bid. Uh, we received this, uh, I think we've, we've not looked at this bid yet, we received the bid last week, two weeks ago, sometime. Uh, we had uh, one bidder on this and we only bid out the Sheriff's Office Uniform. 
and is talking with the sheriff and Mr. Porter, it looks like we want to include the jail uniforms in this bid process, correct? And try to keep all these uniforms from one bid as possible. Uh, and a three-year bid, is that something also that you wanted to look at? I think what we've done is a up, two. Bid, up two, three years. How, how does that? It's They've got the wording in there. Um, as long we, as both we parties are agreeable to it. Okay. It can be maintained up to three years. So what they, what the, I think what the sheriff would like to do is ask that we reject and rebid to include the jail uniforms and then have that stipulation in there that is up two, three years that we left out this time. Is that yes. correct? So is there any, any thoughts or on that? I'm, I'm, I'm good with that. Yeah. Okay. So we'll have the bids on the next uh, meeting so that we can reject those and we'll go ahead and get the bid together so that as soon as that's rejected we can rebid uh, with, with jail and sheriff uniforms uh, with those stipulations. All right. So the next items regarding the animal ordinance. Um, there was a question as to whether or not uh, live trapping on one's property is something that can be done under this ordinance or can be done by law. And, and basically what I understand, Mr. Venable, correct me, is that uh, uh, we've been asked to consider that adding to our vicious animal ordinance a provision that just clarifies that we can, that someone can live trap, is that correct? That's what, yeah, I had a couple of different phone calls and one from the gentleman that came and asked that question here. And as far as I know, we never came up with any document or any law that said that it was permissible for them to, yeah. to catch someone else's domesticated animal on their property and then once they catch it, what do they do with that animal? I mean, do they deliver mm -hmm. it to the um, animal control? Animal control or, um, you know, what? I, I'm saying we uh, should uh, you know, go ahead and let them, let them live trap and deliver it to animal control. How would we spell that out, Mr. Porter? How do you spell that out? Uh, well, I, I need to go back and look at the ordinance, see what it says currently, but if we can just amend the ordinance to specifically provide that a landowner can live trap a, a domestic animal on their own property. And once they do that, they deliver it to the uh, animal control, to the, to the family. Does that give us any, that open any liability or anything for us? Not to the county. Uh, it just. I think there was concern, some concern, as, as we looked at the animal, uh, vicious animal ordinance previously about what landowners' rights are as far as taking care of their own property. And I think uh, Mr. Benham was right, this was one of the issues that came up uh, and just never was addressed. So, well, there's a lot of cattle farmers and yeah. everything have trouble with animals. And, mm -hmm. and shoot them, they're going to get prosecuted, so uh, that's what we need to do. If we, if, if Are they asking us to provide the trials for them? No, no. And what's the Sheriff's Department's take on it? Uh, in the past, we, what we've been doing is they go to the pound and, and pay a, a deposit on a trap and they come get it, you know, go set it. And if they catch them, they take them to the pound. I'm just afraid what you're going to see is you're going to see people going to get trapped. They're going to be baiting them. These cats and dogs from next door neighbors are going to come over there and then we're going to be overwhelmed with dogs that are show up at the pound or or called for to come get, which I don't think we should have to come we, get. We've not been coming get. If we do it, we're down there. We could clarify that they have to deliver they have them. They have to deliver them to But the fact there's not a leash law and dogs do run wild in the county, if you start baiting, putting bait in the, in the traps, Everybody's dog's going to get caught. And you're going to open a big can of worms. I, I agree and understand for nuisance cats or animals that are causing problems, but um, you're going to have some people that are just going to put live traps up there, bait them up, and they're going to start bringing in 10 dogs a day. Well, the, you know, the ordinance is a vicious animal ordinance. I don't know how you would distinguish at that point whether or not the animal was vicious or not. Because that's really what the ordinance is, well, is designed has, for. Had some language about right. nuisance animals right. in the ordinance, yep. not just vicious animals. But you got to understand, people believe nuisances when they go and go potty in your yard. They think that's a nuisance. It's just a animal. And you're having, you know, you got a hundred head of cattle and they're dropping 
No doubt. Now, yeah. Dollar babies, you know, and, and they're getting well, the law on. covers for that. There is a law for yeah. uh, for animals chasing livestock. They have a right to shoot. If you're, there, shoot if you're there to shoot them, but, right. you know, if you get a, a job and you can't stand guard over you. Yeah. Never is. Look at look at the language sure. and see what. See what we can do to to enforce it, but not overwhelm. Yeah, see what Let's do that. We'll put that on the work session then to have further discussion. With that. You think this could pertain to acreage rather than residence? Letting live trapping happen with acreage instead of residence, and maybe we can take care of the other one. I don't know. But, uh, I don't think you can. Yeah, you've got to decide what the acreage is. You know, is well, is is it ten acres, and if you only have nine acres, and you can't do it, but. <laughs> You have to get a survey to determine you have to get a survey to I understand the We'll see what we can do. Well I mean you, you could do it as a farmer. I mean if you you know what I mean, if you uh, if you're really a farmer you file your taxes as a as a farm. But you biggest farm you get better money man. So we'll look at that language at the next meeting. Work session. Work session. Um, okay, next item regarding the court referral application. Uh, and Mr. Porter, if you can kind of explain. This came up recently, I guess, with, with trying to identify paperwork and, and how the system was set. But sure. could you kind of explain the process or what? Where I, I can. Uh, basically, historically, um, statute provides that um, communities have, can have a community corrections program. Uh, and in order to do that, the county commission has to approve an application that's submitted uh, by some entity or the county can do it themselves. Uh, a number of years ago, 98, I think, or 96, I can't remember which date, but um, sometime before 2000, a group submitted an application, uh, apparently, to the commission to have a community corrections program. Uh, we do have record, or we've been able to find a record in the file where the resolution was passed approving that application, but nobody can find the application. We don't have a copy of the county, doesn't have a copy. Uh, community Corrections of Jackson, Community Corrections and Detention of Jackson County Inc. doesn't have a copy. As far as I know, the Department of Corrections does not have a copy. So a plan was approved. We don't know what's in the plan. So uh, what we've been discussing is uh, requesting a um, new plan so that we know what it says and that we can, everybody knows what, it, what it's all about. That, that's, that's the issue that's come up is we just don't have a copy of the plan. Being that that applicant is had to be approved by the county, is it subject to audits, uh, state audits? Or it is subject to audit by the Department of Corrections, as, my, as I recall the statute, which is a minimal audit. It's not a full audit like the county gets. Is there anything that defines the application process? Yes, okay. it's, it's pretty detailed. So that's, you know, in, in looking at that, and obviously we need to move forward with this, we need to have an application on file and start that process. But that's what I think uh, a better understanding of that process. Uh, could we could we get something that kind of outlined that process sure. to the commission so that we can yeah. uh, you know, discuss that? And of course it will include the new application, include you know, whatever other uh, uh, things we need to do in order to, to confirm, I guess, the uh, with the, word, the program, right. but uh, because there's none in place, I think it's only appropriate that we go through a through the process in order to you know make sure it's done right, and then also have that application on file if that's the way we pursue it or the way we plan to move forward. Right. 
any other thoughts or questions on it? I'll just outline the process so that y'all understand what it's supposed to be. So if we can... If, uh, we need to proceed with it, yeah. Yeah, so, so if, you can, if you can get us a copy of that process, uh, <coughs> uh, what we can do is this next uh, meeting, we'll take a look at that, discuss any further, and then I think we can handle the process administratively. It's not until the actual approval that we have to vote. Is that correct, Mr. Porter? Correct. So as we discuss that, you know, we'll we'll move forward with whatever pieces of that process we need to. Any questions? Um, next item regarding the Bryant Senior Center. Uh, the, uh, the Bryant Senior Center has been looking at the possibility of moving to uh, another location. Currently, they're in the, is it the Ruritan building mm -hmm. in Bryant, and they they would like to move to a building that is uh, on school property at the Bryant School. Um, they've asked for the county's assistance in this process uh, in making the move, which we could provide some of uh, our maintenance guys to do some of the work. But the big portion of this is that we would have to enter into a contract. Uh, because the CEO or Council on Aging is a county department, we would need to enter into an agreement with the school system uh, to use that building. Um, and that agreement would look something we would make any necessary upgrades to the building to, to meet the requirements um, uh, necessary to meet the, uh, what's the code, uh, health, health inspections and codes and things like that. Uh, and then the Bryant would, school would maintain the facilities as far as the um, utilities and things like that, similar to the agreement that's taking place up at the uh, Ruritan Club as it stands now. Um, this is a better location for them. I think it's a, a somewhat nicer location for them. The current building we're in now is called the Park it's got mold in it. Uh, it's, it's really terrible. Has anybody looked at this one they're wanting to go into? Yes, it's where, where we have the Bryant Breakfast. breakfast. But once you do that, are we talking about you know, fire sprinklers? You say bring it up to code. No, the code, the code, it requires some things like, uh, you know, handicap uh, accessible uh, facilities, uh, uh, sink, three, three, hand, what's the word, three tub sink or whatever, three, 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 three sink. sink, a few things like that. Uh, we did have the health inspector go up there to take a look at it because I didn't think it'd be worth pursuing if there was going to be some huge thing had to be done. But the health inspector did go up, I think, last week to uh, look or maybe two weeks ago now and she provided a report of the things that needed to be done and there was nothing that was just glaring that wasn't doable wasn't feasible so the doors and all radiate it's a, it's a fairly good building and then we'll be moving the voting to the bright school yeah it will be a separate building from the school yes it is one of the other breakfast is fully the bright breakfast oh yeah that building if the community watch uses it oh, now, community watch, right. yeah. but they don't use it during the day through the week. So the, yeah. the seniors would yeah. use it during the day through the week. Community watch would use it at their time. And the school system, as I understand it, is, doesn't use it for anything. The only other activity that I know of, other than they may rent it from time to time, is the uh, voting. So if we yeah. did do this, we would need yeah. to vote, leave the voting to the school. And uh, from my understanding, that's okay. the principal's okay with that. I want to confirm with the superintendent and principal that there are no other questions or issues. But as long as that's the case, and, and if the commission's good with it, then that's kind of how it'll be laid out. So, any other questions? On that? What uh, what we'll do is, I think the the school board has a meeting coming up. I'd like to present that to them. Of course, uh, I want we will I, I don't know that we'll have a, uh, anything for us to vote on before the school board does, uh, but. And I just want to make sure there's no opposition before we present both the board. And see. I have a question. Mm -hmm. You say it's the building where the Bryant Neighborhood Watch is located? Mm -hmm. I thought they, the Bryant Neighborhood, neighborhood Watch owned that building. No, school. The school owns yeah, the building. Jackson County School System owns the building. You know, the property and the building was, I don't know who built the building, but it's on school property. Mm -hmm. I think it's a volunteer group that built it originally. It used to be a rescue squad. Yeah. Uh, but it's still, it is property. But the, 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 the renovations and all that's been done through the years. It's just been private. Private donations and, and yeah. okay. okay. Any other questions or comments? I'll, I'll try to get a, um, 
I've got a list of some of the things based on the health inspection, so I'll try to get that to you so you can take a look at it, see if there's anything glaring on that. If there's no opposition, we can discuss it again. If we can, we'll put it on the agenda next Monday just for a quick discussion to see if there's any other comments before we take it further to the school board. Is that acceptable? Want to do it? All right, the final thing is regarding hours of operation. Um, we set the hour for 7.30 to 5 p.m. Monday through Thursday, and this morning it was very clear that there's going to be some concerns and issues. Of course, employees have to get here a little bit early in order to uh, you know, get in the office and, and be prepared to have the customers. So what I wanted to present uh, for today uh, would be that our uh, doors open at 7.30, as they have always done, and... Um, the offices will open no later than 8 a.m. and this is a temporary fix until we come up with a more permanent solution. The security committee met last week and talked about some options with badges and things like that. So I'm going to look into that a little bit further and see what the possibility of doing that would be so that employees can have access to come in at 7.15 or 7.20. But is there any opposition to doing that for the time being? Um, I don't think we have to vote on anything. I just want to make sure that that's okay to pursue it that way. That, that county offices will not open, or open no later than 8 a.m. That way employees can get in here and, and get prepared. If they're able to open at 7.30, they can open. Uh, if they have some things they need to do, they may open at 7.45. Okay. Any concerns with that? And then, in the meantime, I'll also look to see about, uh, uh, we need a long-term solution, obviously, if we're going to, uh, maintain this so that employees can't get in uh, before the deputies. I think we're coming at 7:30, and they were already working nine hours when everybody else was working eight. Now you're asking them to work ten, so they can come right. and do nine. So, so they're I staying at 7:30, and I don't think we need to ask them to continue to come in earlier. They want to be paid to come in extra and be here, you know, for everybody right. coming in. Doing Again, this is just temporary. Hopefully, we'll have something more permanent within a month or so. Okay. Quiet bunch. Silence consent. Is that what that means? <laughs> okay. I'll, I will. I am working on the other option as well. I've got a meeting tomorrow to discuss some of the other options, so hopefully we can come up with a different solution. But after seeing this morning, I think we need to, you know, make it clear that employees uh, have a solution for them. And we had a lot of employees standing out here at 730 this morning. And they were behind people trying to get in. So. Right. So this would uh, <coughs> give them an opportunity to get in and get in their office before business actually starts. All righty. Um, that concludes everything on the agenda. Move on to our reports. Mr. Manning, you have anything? Uh, just put uh, everybody a copy of the budget. Mm -hmm. in your mailbox so if I should have a copy any questions on any of it see me about it but that's and that's all I've got Mr. Bender no sir Mr. Porter all right thank you anything been discussed about the driver's license office continuing to be in the basement it uh, it's not on the closure list but I mean they're down there for free and that is a lot of the traffic in the world. Uh, it was talked about a little bit through the budget process. I think if we want to pursue changing that, we need to put that. I mean, is that something we want to pursue looking at? Changing the so. location? Mm -hmm. okay, we can put that on the next work session agenda and see what our options are. Do you know if there's any legal requirement to how's that or what, how that is? I'm not understanding that we're just giving them space for free and we don't have to, but. It don't have to be in the courthouse. It has been for any cool stuff. But we've always supplied a place for them. Right. Out there, extension office would be a good place for them. Do you know that, Mr. Porter? Are we required? I do not, I do not know the answer to that question. I'll look at it. Let's just take furnish it because, yeah, they've got empty offices over there anyway. Yeah, that's where they go. That, that's 95 percent of the early early traffic mm -hmm. coming trying to get in the courthouse. They go, they yeah. don't get in line. Yeah. That's what someone said. Most of them this morning went downstairs. Mm -hmm. the health department where it's got empty offices. That's the state. 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 State.
Uh, we'll look at that, and I guess we can have something on the agenda on the 19th, whatever that is. Yeah, a week from, two weeks from today at the work session to see what our options are on it. Put on our next week? Yep, we don't know what our options are. I said Oh, but we can't tell them where to move unless we're putting them in our own building. we got to find out if we can leave them in the room. We're going to go first for a place. We'll probably close it. We'll close the whole thing. We'll close it. 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 we will I thought they had a big job. Two guys to sit around. No, that place is packed with different organizations. All right. Um, I just want to ask you, these uh, uh, various agencies and uh, uh, individuals that uh, appropriations that we uh, discontinued, I just want to make sure that all of those were officially notified. We'll have a letter going out okay. for that. Yeah, we're late on that. <coughs> but we will have a letter going out to you. <coughs> Anything else? Mr. Idle? No, sir. Mr. Gable? No, sir. Mr. Gaffey? No, sir. That concludes the item for today. So with that, we'll entertain the motion to adjourn. Next meeting, actually, uh, next meeting is next Monday, the holiday, so our meeting will be on Tuesday, uh, same time, 3 p.m. Um, that's it. Is there else? So, motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor say aye. aye.